It's a brand new day hey. Wake up every morning and say It's a brand new day hey. Take a good day, make it great Okay, cause if you got some lemons Make some lemonade, yeah Taste those lemons. Hey y'all, welcome back to the Garden Diaries We're so happy that you're with us Thank you for tuning in If you haven't already followed us on social media Please do that If you listen to us on Apple or Spotify, leave us a, a review. We would love to hear from you. Also, if you have any prayer requests, please reach out. Megan and I would love to be praying for you all. Um, but yeah, we're just so happy you're here. Um, Megan. We have a very special guest, <laughs> which is what she says I say every time. So I'm not going to switch it up this time. <laughs> Who's our special guest? So we have Jen with us today. Welcome to the podcast. We are so excited you're here. Um, we, first of all, Jen goes to church with us. She's also in our small group. Um, so we're super excited just to talk about all the things today. But, Tell us about yourself. Well, she said. <laughs> <laughs> I took Megan's part because I like to make her <laughs> question. She keep her on her toes over here. All the time. All the time. <laughs> I just have to say, like. One of the, the qualities about me that, like, probably isn't the best quality about me is, like, I like to fly by the seat of my pants. Like, okay. I really, I go back to, like, I said this before, but, like, in work, I am really have to be so organized because I project manage a lot of things. So, like, when I'm done with that, like, I don't want to think. Right. So, I just want to, like, hey, like, let's do this. That sounds fun. Like, let's do it. Like, I don't want to plan anything. And it drives Megan insane because, like, she'll ask me questions and I'll be like, Sure. Sure. <laughs> that sounds great. She's like, you haven't thought about it at all. <laughs> I bet you you are so fun to be married to. <laughs> Wonder what the cameraman so, thinks. So fun. <laughs> I keep it interesting. That yes. is for sure. I, hey. I he's he's very, very organized too, and he's methodical and mm -hmm. he's like Megan. And I say he's like the boy version of Brie. A hundred percent. Well, oh, see, you're like the girl version of Zach because Zach is the one that keeps me fun. It's, it's good, though. To <laughs> and drives you crazy at the same time. <laughs> but I love him for it. That's good to have someone that makes you come out of your box, oh, yeah. though. You know? Well, enough about me. Yeah. <laughs> Let's <laughs> talk about you. <laughs> uh, my name is Jennifer Patrick. Uh, I am a mom of two, um, a six-year-old and a three-year-old. Uh, my husband is active duty Navy. Uh, fun fact, we are both from Pensacola, Florida, uh, born and raised, my husband and I. Uh, he enlisted uh, about 10 years ago, and we started the journey of different duty stations and going across the way and away from home. And uh, this duty station here at Pensacola, we got orders here, and this is our first time back home in uh, 10 years. So uh, cool to be back. Uh, it has changed, yeah. changed so much. It's kind of surreal. Also, you get so used to life on your own. Um, you know, when you're a military wife and you're away from family um, and just doing life on your own. I had my kids while we were, you know, stationed elsewhere. And this is the first time, like, they're available to help. But, like, family's here and friends are here. But it's kind of weird. Like, I don't even know how to ask for it. You yeah. know what I mean? Because I'm just like trying to be super mom and super mom. <laughs> but, um, so yeah, I, I'm a um, RCM, that's a revenue cycle manager for a medical billing company. It probably sounds boring, but basically like an, uh, uh, an accounts manager in the medical billing world. Hmm, okay. Mm -hmm. So do you call me like when my bills are overdue and ask me for money? No, basically okay. um, I make sure that our um, team, like we have clients, like a uh, doctor's offices or, or provider offices with multiple doctors um, and we do full revenue cycle so that's uh, anywhere from entering coding and entering in the charges to where it's being processed by the insurance and it comes back we post the payments work the AR for any denials like that entire process oh, wow. I oversee a team that does that for clients not that I don't pay my medical bills because that would yes. be a really bad thing. Do I um, need to report? No, I'm just kidding. No, we I'm have just military insurance, so you know how that is. It's yes. an act of Congress to get anything um, pushed through, especially because he's out of the military. We have Champ VA, so mm -hmm. nobody knows what Champ VA is. Like, I, yes, and because there's different kinds too. So Champ VA, and then like you have like TriWest, so like. 
um, VA, and then you have retired Tricare. There are so many Tricares, and then Tricare itself, you know, you have Tricare East, Tricare West, like there's all kinds. So it's all, and unfortunately, a lot of insurances are that way. I could bore you all day long with insurance talk, but that's basically what I do is make sure people are doing what they're supposed to do, and also that the revenue for our clients is flowing the way it should be. Is there a dip? Why? Different charges? Are there? Is there an issue with what's being billed out? This is all probably sounds boring, but... No, I mean, that is what my world exists. You know those um, Instagram reels where the people like are stalking and the other person's just blinking because they don't understand. <laughs> <laughs> That's how I feel. Yeah. That's how it is for most of the people. When when I have to speak to, not very often do I have to speak with patients, but if it gets escalated, you know what I mean, high enough, um, I'm that calm voice. You know that it's brought. You do to have and, a very calming <laughs> voice. Thank like you. it's like I'd pay my bills if you called me. <laughs> <laughs> they come up, they come, they, you know, get to me and I'll give them a call and, and they're just not understanding it. It's, it's not, I don't feel like you're alone. Uh, I mean, everyone that I talk to, they don't get, in, I understand because it's my world and it's mm-hmm. my career and what I've been into, but like, I, I don't understand how insurance carriers think that normal people are supposed to know, like what it all means. <laughs> yeah. Like when you get an EOB, how to, an explanation of benefits, like after oh, you have, good, you know what I mean? Good thing you told me what that was, because I'm like, I don't know. <laughs> after you have a medical service, you know what I mean? Like people don't know what that means. I put that thing away. Like, um, I don't need that, right? <laughs> <laughs> and we're done with that. <laughs> don't need that. I mean, if you want to make sure that, you know, you're what your copay and coinsurance really was supposed to be and mm. they didn't collect more than they should have, you would look at, look mm. at that thing. Oh, mm, probably should be looking at that. I will uh, another sidebar because squirrel today because that's just my brain. But like, I am not a male person, so like mm, me either. Girl. I think it's like, mm. except for like last night, it kind of changed my perspective just a little, and I'll tell you why. But like, Mike is like a kid in a candy store. Like he sees the male person drive up, and he's that's like, me. "We are oh got mail. Like we got mail. Like, you exactly <laughs> spotted me for that." I'll go out in a rainstorm. Yes. Like, it's time for the mail. Stop it. Why? Do you think that you're going to win? One day, I'm making something that'll change the whole trajectory of my life. future. Mike thinks he's going to win Publisher <laughs> Clearinghouse one day. So he's just <laughs> waning by the mailbox. Like, it's oh like a dog. Gosh. Like, literally, I, 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 I like, whether there's more people like me. That I think is it's so, so funny. T- like, email me, text me, call Girl. me. Like, I don't I want it. this paper. Like, I'm going to look at it, it, and I'm putting the trash. Yes, we are. Um, It's known in my, uh, you know, tight-knit community of family and friends that uh, we don't check our mail, but maybe once a month. We just, we're not. Our, like, Megan <laughs> says, <laughs> she's blinking again. I'm we telling you, you need to live a little. <laughs> we, don't, we, just, we don't. And Drew will tell you it's because uh, mm. if he, we had a mailbox that was by, you know what I mean, like in front of our house, that mm-hmm. he would check it every day. I don't know how true that is. But he says, <laughs> he says it would be. But uh, his excuse is, you know, you have to go. Now it's all the community mailboxes. They're not like, mm. and you have to go yeah. way down the way. But I So we watched Chicago Fire, and I think I'd, I've said this before on a podcast, but we're like binge watching it. Well, we're on the episode, spoiler alert, if you're watching Chicago Fire, mm-hmm. where they... Um, can't plug my ears. Can't plug your ears. <laughs> um, where they rush to a scene where a mail truck is overturned. And, like, one of the older gentlemen in the firehouse is like, oh, we have to get all these letters back. Like, this is someone's, like, home. And, like, he's making this big deal about it. Well, he, get back, he gets back to the firehouse, and he has one underneath his boot. And he can't figure out, like, who it's to. But he's like, this is so important. I get it back to this person. Well, at the end of the episode, he finally figures out the address. And he walks up to the door. And he hands it to the lady whose husband has died overseas. And it was the last letter he wrote to her. Oh, see. No, you check it. your mail now? I was about to say, you just validated everything. <laughs> yeah. I know. I was, you're welcome. I was just having your story. Okay, said. fun fact. We actually had a mail truck catch fire that delivers mail to our area. Because, like, two months later, we got, like, charred things in this thing say just fyi this was part of that truck that caught on fire. <laughs> oh my god no <laughs> like, think of those bills and we're like yeah we don't need those <laughs> see i also like i don't pay the bills so like i don't want to see the bills mm. like that stresses me out so like the mail stresses me out because i'm like it's just a bill like why would you want to look at like the money that's depleting from your account like that's depressing mm. hmm. you're welcome yeah I'm still going to check my mails. So. <laughs> <laughs> all right on to the questions now that we've scrolled for nine minutes <laughs> jeez um, do you want to go first or do you want me to go first? You can go first. Okay. So obviously we like to do some fun questions, which <clears throat> we know you love. <laughs> <laughs> this, this is my favorite part of the, <laughs> of the um, So what's a skill you've always wanted to learn but haven't yet? 
<coughs> so there are so many skin, skills that I wish. Um, I really wish I could speak a different language. Ooh. Um, fun fact, I took two years of Spanish in high school, aced it. Two years of Spanish in college, aced it. Can I speak Spanish fluently? No. <laughs> <laughs> I took four years in high school and didn't retain hardly anything. None of it. And my uh, husband's father, so my father-in-law, is uh, Puerto Rican, and he... Mm -hmm, and he speaks Spanish yeah. and will speak to me in Spanish. <laughs> and I can understand some, but he wants me to respond to him oh, in wow. Spanish. See. And I don't know all the things. Yes. So I'll <laughs> add it or put an L in front. And it <laughs> like in the words. Yeah. He, calls, he calls it genismo. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> um, that is. So I would really wish I could retain enough Spanish or any. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? I think it's so important with how immersed all the cultures are now. Um all the different cultures to be able to speak a different language, even sign language too. You know, I think yeah. it would be really great. <clears throat> Another skill I would love is I would love to know how to work on a car. Mm, that's a good like point. Auto, like I really would. Like I have wanted to take, I think George Stone still does auto classes. Maybe, I don't even know if it's still called George Stone. It was over by West Florida High School. The, yeah. Wait, the camera's like, yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Um, it's a, uh, you know, you can do different things. I think the, I think the police academy is there, too. Anyways, they have classes, and I've thought about, I'm like, maybe I could take a class and learn, learn how to but do stuff on a car. But you have to get your hands dirty. I'm fine with, with this. <laughs> I'm oh, fine okay. with getting my hands dirty. I think it's being able to, and I, I get it, a lot of cars now, like, you can't yeah you know what I mean you you need to, they're all fancy now and like you it's not the basics but I think we've talked about this before my dream car is a 1965 mm -hmm. fastback Mustang that is my question for you that's my oh. next one what's your dream car well, before hold on before you go, ask the question that's already been answered um <laughs> whoa <laughs> I'm sorry I was real no. I was going on you go ahead Megan <laughs> so, talking about your, your like a little fun fact little plug here you were talking about mm -hmm. with Spanish like my brother took Spanish in high school, and he was like, why do I have to take Spanish? I'm never going to use this again. Fun fact, he was stationed in Puerto Rico, is now married to a Puerto Rican, Ooh, and see? my mom was like, you should have paid attention to class. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Look, you could be, you could be impressing your, <laughs> exactly. your wife, wife's family with your, you know, speaking Spanish. So, mm -hmm. Sorry. She answered my mm -hmm. question. So that was yes. my, literally, what is your dream car? So say it again. A 1965 Fastback Mustang, and I would like it to be um, Gunsmoke Metal, Ooh. the color. Um, it is actually what I call my, um, to speak it out into the universe, it's what I call my midlife crisis car. Love like that. my husband's supposed to be budgeting. <laughs> like, because I have supported him and followed him through his career, you know what I mean? Holding, holding it down for the family and like, um, maybe not 40, but like 45. I think 40 is a really doable age. Right? Like, I mean, so that's what I call, you know, the midlife crisis. And that's usually, it's like stereotypical for men to go out and get, you know what I mean? Well, I'm going to go out and get a muscle car. And that's what I want. Um, and I either need to learn how to work on it. But Drew has also said that he should probably learn how to work on it. Another fun fact, though, my brother-in-law, my nephews, like I grew up around drag strip racing. Like we would go out to um, like Holt before it closed. There was a, a drag strip out there. Um, now it's at more that a lot of people go to, but I grew up out on the track and, um, they all know how to work on cars. So we all know I'm not gonna be able to afford like a mint condition 1965. I'm going to get a rust bucket and then my brother-in-law and my nephews are going to help me restore it. A little I bit love time. that. And Drew, if you're listening, um, being a military wife, and I can say this cause I was one is the hardest job you hmm. can have. So she definitely deserves that car. I deserve, it. <laughs> I deserve it. And we know he's listening. Uh -huh. <laughs> Your turn. Oh, it's my turn. Sorry. <laughs> my question got answered in your question. My you please, stole my question, Megan. <laughs> let's please continue with the best question. Okay. <laughs> What's a conspiracy theory you secretly oh, no. be believe might be true? <laughs> you asked this because of what I said to you the other day, huh? She believes in a lot of conspiracy theories. Oh, I'm in the hole. I'm in the rabbit hole. Are you in the rabbit hole? Okay, so look. Here's the thing. <sighs> Drew. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Drew, Drew is, I don't want to say one of the weird conspiracy people. That's me. We're in the hole together. But we 
are deep. You he, found your people. Yes. He he is so open to hearing all of the things. And he'll go down the rabbit hole with them. And he's just like, I'm just saying, look at the connections. Right. I'm not, I'm not saying it's right. But I'm not, then he will send me videos and show me all the things. <laughs> It's like, Mike, Mike does that you're too. describing <laughs> his wife. I'm just, he's just, and I'm just like, really, another video? And he gets aggravated with me because they'll be long. You know, those conspiracy videos are long. But you got to really get all the facts You got to get all the facts, but I don't want to watch all those videos. I'm like, barely want to watch a reel, okay? Like, <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not trying. And he, Drew will get mad at me because I'm like, 10, or, well, not, maybe not 10 seconds, 20 seconds in. And I'm like, okay. I'm not, he's like, no, no, no stop it. <laughs> stop. You got to get all this stuff. <laughs> so anyways, <laughs> that's not really answering your question because my husband is more of it. Um, Has of, he convinced you of one? <laughs> you know, one of the ones that there are so many that I'm like, oh, that's interesting. There are some that I probably should not broadcast <laughs> on, <laughs> on 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 here with the uh, you know events in the last well five years. You know what I mean? So we'll probably keep those to <laughs> keep those to ourselves. Um, but one that I think holds truth to it, and I think it's more and more as data comes out, is just like what is in our food you know what I mean what is in our food and how like mm. the conspiracy theories between like why in America versus other countries and like you know why all that data has been hidden for so long mm. and, and now it's starting to come out and then also um just how our food is done like the farms here mm-hmm. versus other countries and just like what they've allowed to go into you know what I mean processed in, yeah. processed in mm. and stuff like that like I do believe like there's a whole lot of truth to that I mean compared to other kind of ask, you know what I mean there has to be truth into it also look at the health of yes. our the way that we've diminished and we mm-hmm. won't get down the rabbit hole because I know um, every time um, I talk about it with Bree, she's like I don't want to hear it I don't, I'm I too stressed out already I don't want to hear anything yes. <laughs> I'm always intrigued though what people actually believe well, right now I'm, you would be surprised what I believe and I'm mm-hmm. probably not going to enlighten you on it because mm-hmm. I think you would look at me differently oh no no you, I, I, um, you said you didn't believe dinosaurs existed, and I'm still your friend. <laughs> I mean, true. that's a hard, but I had a hard See? time with dinosaurs. So, but, and I also take aliens. Things been... My husband and aliens, guys. Now I feel ganged <laughs> up on. <laughs> okay. My husband and aliens. Talking about, conspiracy, talking about conspiracy theories and the videos of, like, the pyramids and, mm-hmm. like, all the intel- guys, and then, like, the, the ocean is really where they, they are, you know? <laughs> <laughs> like, Atlantis is like... I'm not saying aliens don't exist. I really don't know, I guess, what I, again, I probably shouldn't get, get into all that with this podcast, but that's another one where it's just like, we don't know, and you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Our, our God is all powerful, man. Mm-hmm. That's you know right. what I mean? Who's to say that he has not created some other being? You know what I mean? Optimus Whatever you want to call it. The all spark might be another form of the Holy Spirit. I'm just <laughs> I'm just saying. I can't even look at you. I'm just saying. Optimus Prime. Could be. I'm with you, Megan. I'm sorry. I'm with you. I'm with you. This is why we can't be serious. This is the first week of school. Yes, please forgive. Please forgive. Sleep deprivation. Okay, I'm, I'm going to move on to my next question. Get used to car lines. It's just a problem. If if you want to talk conspiracy <laughs> theories, please DM me because I believe in them. Um, mm-hmm. What reality TV show would you be on if you could pick? Ooh. <laughs> is there one about conspiracy? <laughs> yeah, is there one about conspiracy? <laughs> um, there are so many. So... Make I feel like I crying. have to sit. So, <laughs> Tari needed him. <laughs> we haven't even gotten to the deep oh stuff. Oh my yet. gosh. This is good before the deep stuff. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to get my tears out. Exactly. I'm going to have lots of happy tears and it'll be good. Mm-hmm. Um, I feel like I need to censor my answers. <laughs> you don't have to censor. It's um, fine. Um, okay. So <laughs> the. Um, what was it? Bama Shore or Bama whatever? Okay. Floor Bama Shore. Floor Bama Shore. <laughs> Listen. You have the Listen. giggles. I was so. I went to high school with one of those guys. Did That's really? Which one? Kodai. No. Yeah. Can we edit this one? Yeah. <laughs> no, we cannot. 
Dude, I, fun fact, I didn't go to high school really? with them in middle school. Well, like, here's the thing about, like, I was, I don't know why I was disappointed, but, like, to find out it wasn't even the Floribama, like, mm-hmm. line mm-hmm. or anywhere near it, you know, you think it, like, Pensacola or Gulf Shores, it was Panama City, which, I mean, make Panama City, you know, and it makes sense to go over there and be cray-cray, but, <laughs> you know, I'm just saying, you go over there and be cray-cray, but um, I was like, what? So I would like to be on that one just for it to be, like, in this area mm. not to partake in the things necessarily they were partaking in but like you know what i mean be like no this is the real floor bama yeah. you know yeah. what i mean like this is where it's at um also dancing with the stars because mm. i would love that i i love to dance i'm not saying i'm good at it but i do love to dance and uh i would love to be profession taught by a professional would yeah. be so cool what a great experience that uh, for me at least i think would be a great experience yeah mm-hmm. megan what would you choose Survivor. I I was about to say that. I would probably say Survivor. That would be cool, but I feel like I would. You I probably won't survive. Right. I would not survive. <laughs> I wouldn't survive for first, first episode. But I mean, I I do love the outdoors. Mm-hmm. It, like, mm-hmm. you know, yeah. Okay, you, yeah. Brittany. What about you? Uh, mine is just should censor mine too, but mine would be real world. Yeah, like old school real old world, school like, real world. Mm. like Vegas real world. <laughs> Megan's like no, no, no. I'm just. <laughs> have you seen it? No. Okay. I'm sorry. What? I, I don't watch a lot of reality Old TV. School. Well, this is like guess, MTV. Yeah. Like when we were like, I was supervised as a child, so I didn't. See. <laughs> so I was did watching I. like I was, Walker I Texas seen. Ranger and stuff. Yeah. Good 16. for you, Meg. That's, yeah. that's yes, we had cable and hearts. I didn't have a lot of fun. <laughs> that's good. Okay, Megan, you're next. You're next. <laughs> This isn't as bad as I thought it was going to be. This I question. told you. I yeah. think it's because we're all really tired. <laughs> yeah, just so just so the audience knows, I was dreading this part of the podcast. <laughs> I don't. I don't usually like these kind of questions. All right. What's the most bizarre food combination you enjoy? Ooh. Oh. Okay. Let me think. I don't th- really think this is bizarre, but it always catches me off guard when people are either like, ooh, or have not tried it before. Because to me, it's like, how could you not know this is a thing? Mm-hmm. Um, and if you do know it's a thing, who are you to not <laughs> like it? Is uh, French fries dipped in vanilla ice cream? Mm, yes, like a Wendy's <laughs> Look at Brittany's. <laughs> I, I will do French fries in a chocolate like shake. You know, I find that so interesting because I prefer chocolate. Like, I'm a chocolate person. But when I'm about to dip, my salty goodness of uh, typically McDonald's, because, you know, they got the salty, yummy goodness, uh, into the ice cream, vanilla ice cream all the way. That's a big thing back where I'm from is in a Wendy's Frosty. Fries in a Wendy's Frosty. Mm. But, but yeah, it has to be get... a chocolate one. No, I think no. you're just on. Okay. <laughs> okay. Just, you. just, just me. You're, you're, it, that's a you thing. But what a beautiful thing that it's a you. <laughs> I love that for you. I love that but for what you. A beautiful thing. I want to be positive affirmation over here. <laughs> I got you, girl. I got so your you. love language is words of affirmation? Absolutely. Oh, no, believe it or not. Because I, I like... thought it was mine, but you taught me. <laughs> <laughs> it is not for other people. To... I love lifting people yeah. up. Like, I truly do. I hope anybody who meets me. And any capacity, um, I hope that's what I give off. Is I, I love to you do. make sure people feel heard, even if it's for a, a split second in life, you know what I mean, mm-hmm. in that time. Um, but to lift people up, whether that's words or just, you know, listening out. But actually, my love language, um, and my husband loves it so much, let me tell you, <laughs> is uh, is it acts of kindness? Service. Or service? service. Acts yeah. of service. Mm-hmm. It should be kindness, because he should be kind to me and just don't know. <laughs> Is Megan's that, is words of affirmation. I said, I will give them to you all day. But and that's like, it's both, it goes both ways. Like, that's mm-hmm. how I love people. And mm-hmm. then that's how I feel loved. Interesting. I didn't even think, I need to do a better study on the love languages. Because mm-hmm. I didn't even realize, like, I concentrated so much on, like, what, how I receive mm-hmm. love. And mm-hmm. how my husband <clears throat> receives it. And didn't even think about, like, what I, how I show it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, so mm-hmm. interesting. Mm-hmm. I think I just learned something. Well, and my kids have different love languages, too. Mm-hmm. So, like, Addison is words of affirmation. Mm. Like, you can say something and it really affects her. Kinsley's, like, in one ear and out the other. Kinsley's care. is physical touch. Mm. Mine's physical touch. Words of affirmation and active service are Mike. So, like, she aligns. It's funny that each kid kind of aligns with mm-hmm. one of our 
love languages. How interesting. Mm -hmm. I really, I think Kinley is definitely a physical touch. My my sweet Kinley. Y'all who don't know, (laughs) my six-year-old is just the sweetest soul. He Um, really is. He's so sweet. And I hope the world's going to... I feel like the world's going to chew him up and spit him out, but when it does, I really just hope he keeps some of that sweetness. Um, but he is uh, definitely physical touch. Liam is my Sour Patch Kid. <laughs> and we also, we also call him, he's my baby pterodactyl, is what I call him, too. I like that. So I don't, I'm not too sure yet what his, his is. Probably, maybe he'll end up being, like, service, because he likes... Or no, is qual- quality time is mm-hmm. one, right? He loves if you'll just be with him. Mm-hmm. Just sit with him, no matter what he's doing. It could be he's looking at a book, and he wants you, he'll go, come sit with me. And <laughs> he wants Aww. you to just come sit right with you. My husband is physical touch. That's my least. See, um, that's mine, and that's Mike's least. It's an, And it was a journey to, to work through that. We could go, we could do a whole podcast. <laughs> we could. Uh, it's, a, it's a journey when you differ. Mm-hmm. I mean, regardless of, you know what I mean? But when you have... <laughs> the, your significant other, you know, it, their love language is your least. least like, what yeah. a struggle. But we did work through it. And I'm glad we, you know, that helped doing the, the study yeah. to even find out what, what it is. It's funny that you say, like, like talking about your kids, because I truly think that the Lord, like, gave my <laughs> daughter to me as as a gift. Oh, well, she is a gift. But, like, <laughs> her love language, how she mm-hmm. is to, is words of affirmation. Because I can be, like, and she doesn't even know it. I don't even have to say anything. Mm-hmm. I'll just be having a bad day or whatever, and she'll just kind of, Mom, you're just so beautiful. Oh my god! And gosh. like, and but she does it to other people too. Like yeah. she'll make you feel like you're a million bucks, and she also is a little spitfire. But um, I wonder where she gets that from. Hmm. Not me. <laughs> <laughs> is Ryder uh, physical touch? I would say he's quality time. Mm. He likes mm. like he's always asking Zach, "Hey, Zach, Dad, will you come play Legos? Will um, we, can you play the Switch?" Like he mm. likes to spend time with you. Right. Mm. Um, but he's also he get he's very independent. Both my kids can have very independent streaks, and I'm I'm very independent, and mm. so they're kind of mixing me and Zach. <clears throat> All right. I think it's my turn, right? I'm done. Okay. Um, <laughs> we. Are done. What's your favorite thing to cook? Ooh. <clears throat> so, I have, um, I'm kind of known for at each new command um, they learn because I'll bring do it one time and then it's uh, requested forevermore while we're stationed there are my homemade chocolate chip cookies. Um, Why have I not had these? Yet? I know I should bake them. <laughs> they, Wednesday? <laughs> yes, I should bring them in. That's a great point. I should um, bring them in. I think I enjoy making it so much because there's something about baking, mm-hmm. you know, like you're just in your field. And now my kids are kind of interested. So, like at Christmas, I always do cookies as um, not just my chocolate chip cookies, but I'll do, you know, sugar cookies and stuff like that. And it's really sweet to make those memories of, you know, rolling out and doing mm-hmm. cookies with them. Um, but th- those cookies, in particular, I've always used that as well at every new duty station. We get a new home, right? New neighbors. Yeah. And every, um, it's usually for, hi, I just want to introduce myself. You know what I mean? I'll bake those cookies every oh. holiday. I give them to my neighbors as well. And they look for, you know, they tell me they look forward to it. And it's just like, I've made memories with those. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Not only the process of baking them, but what, you know, the opportunity to, to share with others with it. That's good. I love that. <clears throat> One thing that I implemented that I used to do with my mom, um, with my kids, is we bake cookies every holiday, every Christmas, and we take them to the firehouses around the area yes. and visit them. So, like, it's a couple days before Christmas or sometimes it's Christmas Eve, depending on, like, what yeah. church and all the things uh, entail. But, like, they bake them and, like, they're part of the process and then they go and then they get to meet these, oh. you know, individuals that are risking their lives and half the time they're not with their family and one thing that I really like to implement especially because we spent many holidays apart just like you know mm-hmm. that that's a luxury to be able to have your loved one on a holiday 100% and mm-hmm. I want them to know like how special that is and like people make mm-hmm. sacrifices for you to have right. these holidays and just like Jesus made sacrifices mm-hmm. for us to to be where we are so like that's one thing that we we do every holiday is we cook and like yeah. <clears throat> I never thought about taking it to a military command, but that's cool. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, we do it to the fire. I love that so much. That's such a great tradition. And Drew's previous commands were small. This is probably the <clears throat> biggest one that he's been at as far as like, because even before at a bigger command, like he had, like it was, you know what I mean? His yeah. specific 
<coughs> group now at the precinct, like it's like, you know, to do that and the, for the DOD as well, that's there. Um, I, when I baked them last time, uh, a couple months ago, it took me like five hours to, oh had to make so many. Yeah. Um, and they have been asking for when I can do it again. Aww. You're like, I don't have five hours. <laughs> I, mean, I barely. I collected no bills time. up in here, okay? <laughs> okay. Exactly. I have no bills. time. I have no time to wash my hair, okay? Like, how am I going to bake all these cookies? <laughs> no. Mom life. Mom, right? Mom life. So, mm. um, Meg, do you want to segue? Or are you still. You good? Go ahead. Okay. I know. I um, feel like I need to cough too. I think it's because we've been laughing so much. Um, I have something in my throat. Yeah, I, I feel you. Sorry for all the coughing today, guys. We are um, laughing away and uh, frogs are in our throats. It's the devil. It's the devil trying to stop us because know. he knows what's about to happen. It's going to be so good. So good. And I'm coming off from being like sick too. So yeah. I just feel like my voice is. Sorry, guys. Probably sounds scratchy. You're good. Okay. So we had fun. Lots of fun. Mm, mm-hmm. um, now we kind of want to get into the nitty gritty. Um, you've shared a little bit of your past mm-hmm. in our small group. Megan mm-hmm. and I kind of know a little bit. But um, first and foremost, <clears throat> just with some of the pieces that you've shared and where you are right now and where God has like delivered you is just mm-hmm. so admirable. So I just want to put that out there. I know that um, a lot of times it's really hard to share the struggle Mm -hmm. um and now looking back you can see like god's goodness through all of it right um but just wanted to give you the opportunity to kind of share your story Mm -hmm. of um how god has just been good Mm -hmm. even in the dark valleys right um so i guess i want to start by saying that like what i'm about to and i'm not going to go into full details on some of this stuff, but even what I am about to share, there's only maybe two or three people that I've spoken out loud, you know what I mean, to to this. So it's a very, no one likes to be vulnerable, mm-hmm. <laughs> um, but I especially struggle with it. And so just bear with me through this, you know, we, you know, it's, this is real life in here and we're probably, you know, I might get emotional and we're going to, we're just going to pray through it, work through it. And we're just going to get through it. Um, but so I just want to start off by, by saying that, that there's, um, you know, it is, some of it very dark when I'm about to uh, speak out and it's not, I haven't shared it with, you know, really anybody. So not on this level, I don't think so. Um, I grew up, um, I didn't grow up in the church. (laughs) I grew up in, um, an alcoholic home. Um, I grew up, um, you know, witnessing my father emotionally and physically abuse my mom. Um, when they, you know, even after they separated, um, and we went to another home. It was still, still, unfortunately, an alcoholic home. Um, and grew up around a lot of, of, of drugs. And, and that was just, it was normal to me. It was very, very normal to me. Sorry, ma'am. My things head are going. Headpiece. My headpiece, <laughs> yeah. I, was, I can't, can't think what they're called. The headpiece is falling. Um, it was very normal to me. I didn't know any other way or any other, um, that was my, the atmosphere that I grew up in. Mm. Um, when I was, uh, I was also sexually abused, um, when I was a child, the first time at five, um, and then continued on throughout childhood, um, multiple times, um, and in, uh, you know, different capacities. And it's, again, I, because it's what I knew, I didn't know, I didn't know, I didn't know, uh, absolutely nothing about church and, and, and God. Um, but I didn't even know, like, it wasn't normal, Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know, to, um, even stuff as, you know, people think as simple as like, um, a man giving you a hug and where his hands go, you know Mm -hmm. what I mean? Like what I experienced is very much different than what other people experienced. Um, so it's, um, I did not know until, um, very probably I guess high high school was about ninth grade um my first glimpse of like oh my gosh this is what this is not you know what I mean like there's another long life out there like mm-hmm. you know this isn't normal to be happening and and people's homes and um I I never was um I didn't know what self-worth was you know I I for multiple reasons 
ended up believing that my self-worth was linked to what I can provide um, to a man, you know, and I'm, you know, at a very young age, like, mm-hmm. and, and or even when I got older in a relationship, what I can provide for my body. Mm-hmm. I mean, and that's it. Um, and so, I mean, that combined with the, the abuse, it resulted very much in um, no self-confidence, right? Um, I, it's a, I have a very, or had a very unhealthy idea of what love is and, and how to even be loved. Um, and then on top of that, um, you know, it led me to underage drinking. It led me to um, drugs usage. It led me to, um, you know, premarital sexual relations. Um, it was just, again, that that was my life. You know what I mean? Like, mm-hmm. that was my life. Um, and then one beautiful day, <laughs> one beautiful day um, of a woman, I was on um, my high school swim team, and a uh, woman who um, homeschooled her kids, uh, I don't know if they still do it this way, but when they would want to play sports, they go to, they're allowed to do it for mm-hmm. the high school that they would be district, you know, for their district, mm-hmm. even though they don't attend attend there. And so I, um, they were on my, my swim team, her daughter and her son. And guys, I was rough around the edges. I know it's hard to believe that this, this <laughs> rainbow, this rainbows and sunshine unicorn over here um, was rough around the edges. But I, I, I was. I had a, you know, foul mouth. I um, was aggressive. I mean, I was, ang- you know what I mean? There was a lot mm-hmm. of emotions. I was angry um, about things I didn't understand, you know, understand. Yeah. Um starting to, um, I mean, I was hurt and used in so many different ways and like not knowing how to even process those things or deal with those emotions, um, made me very, I was angry would have, you know, outbursts and, you know, fights, (laughs) (laughs) but she, despite all that, um, you know, I don't, she just reached out and, and would talk to me every every day at a, a swim practice and um, her daughter, you know, and, you know, would talk to me and they asked me to um, come to a lock-in at their, at their church. And um, I thought it was weird. <laughs> <laughs> I, thought, I was like, I mean, if you go to church, it's not weird. If, you don't, if you're not raised in the church, 100%. you're, like, you're going to lock me in a building with, <laughs> with all these people that I don't know. I don't know. Yeah. Excuse me, what kind? This is a, a scary movie. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I know. That's yeah. what I know is that this is the beginning of a scary movie. Yes. Okay. <clears throat> well, I don't know what kind of rituals y'all have to do. But I am. <laughs> not me. I've heard the stories. I've seen the movies. <laughs> exactly. Not me. I'm not going to be. Um, but she, I don't know, something just was like, I didn't have a lot of friends. I had acquaintances. I mean, I knew. Every, you know, one of the, I was one of those people, a lot of people knew me, I knew a lot of people, but I didn't, you know, I didn't have a lot of friends and something just was like, go, it gets you out of the house where you don't want to be. Yeah. And gets you where, you know, out of the house and not around people you don't need to be around, you know, because even at that time, even though it's all I knew, there was, I was seeing like other people, you know what I mean? In a more normal sense of like, Oh, 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 you're telling me you're telling me at 13 you don't you know get drunk on a regular you know what I mean mm-hmm. on a regular basis like it wasn't normal and it was just stuff was starting to come together so I went and that was the start of um, I'm not gonna say I wasn't again <laughs> kind of like during that I mean it was cool they had like volleyball in there and I was very you know athletic and so I kind of you know that was cool to do that um, and kind of did my own thing with with um with her and and we hung out and and it ended up good but what that did was open the door um you know they started inviting me to their their family dinners Hmm. you know to play cards and um they would come pick me up and because I didn't I didn't have a ride and no one was going to take me there so um and then they started inviting me to church and at first I was like I don't know about this Mm -hmm. I don't know about this but I I went and and it It's just, I'm so grateful that her and her children never stopped. 
there was multiple times <laughs> where, you know, I look back and think like, why weren't, why didn't they just like say, oh man, because it didn't stop. I'm not just going to sit here and say that like the Lord touched me in that moment and like I didn't stop all the worldly things because again, I was constantly around, like mm-hmm. my environment, that's what it was. Yeah. Um, and you have a lot of people who don't want their children around people like mm-hmm. that. And I wouldn't have blamed <laughs> I, I was one of those kids that people should not have had their children around, you know. Um, but then I went to blame her. But she never, she never, um, she never stopped. She never stopped sprinkling that water on that seed that yeah. she planted. And, um, you know, I made mistakes in, in going into that that church, you know, um, meaning react, being reactive to, because people did judge. You know, I, I wasn't going there with anybody. When mm-hmm. I showed up, I was, you know, with, with them. When I got baptized, I was no one in there in that, you know, in the pews for me, but that fan, you know what mm-hmm. I mean? And people talk, people judge that. That's everywhere. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? Um, I still had a reactive attitude. Mm-hmm. <laughs> attitude. We call it the, the gangster me when you come, <laughs> <laughs> come out. Um, but even then that family only showed me love, mm-hmm. only ever showed me love would sit down with me and try and bibli- you know, show me biblically how I could have handled the situation differently. Mm. Mm. Seriously talking through of why I would say the things that I would say or react the way that I did, but not in a shameful way. And I had enough shame. Mm-hmm. I had <laughs> I was overflowing with with shame, especially when even when I started going to church and learning I'm sitting I'm sitting in a room with people who have never done the things that I've done, like in a youth group, you know mm-hmm. what I mean? There, you know, and during that time, you know, the, the promise ring mm-hmm. and, and just like the, the studies that, yep. you know what I mean? And, and big study in, in that, in that church for that youth group at the time. And, um, the talks about like, why not to have, you know, premarital relations. And not that I, I disagree with that, but I was in that youth group knowing that like that all surpassed a long, long time ago. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And, um, they had no way of knowing, you know what I mean? Right. Knowing, so I'm not saying that against them. I'm just saying as a child to <laughs> feel that much shame, you know, it, it breaks pieces of you and it's taken a really, really long time to come back from, mm-hmm. from that. You, you really do wonder if you're too broken, if, if you're lovable. Because the the things that you're taught to to value and the and the things you know what I mean, it takes a long time to learn that a sin is a sin is a sin, and mm-hmm. that everyone everyone has sinned, right? And and um, no matter what you are, no matter what you are worthy, you know, of His love, you know, of the Lord's love. Like it doesn't matter what you do. But again, as a child, it's such a um, it's a hard thing, and that family. They continue to pour in, you know, just consistently. Um, but even with that, you know, I got saved. I got <laughs> baptized. Um, and But I didn't have an intimate relationship with the Lord. I didn't, again, I didn't grow up in the, you know what I mean, in the church. And there were still a lot of pieces missing there as far as, like, understanding Um what having a relationship with, like, I felt it, like, he was in my heart, you know what I mean? I truly believe that, you know what I mean? I'm saved, even then, that I was saved, but to understand what it meant to have an intimate relationship with the Lord, you know what I mean? Um, And that didn't happen for almost, like, nine years later. Well, nobody taught you. No, no one, yes, no one taught me, Um, and, and even what I was taught again I didn't speak out you know about the things that I, I mean people know I came from a rough, a rough background but I didn't speak out and it um there when we got stationed it was our first duty station my husband and I we left Pensacola and uh I found and um I just want to say this this too for anybody who's listening who um it is so important who you surround yourself with mm. I cannot speak speak that enough, that the community that you surround yourself with, um, the community you choose to immerse yourself into, it matters. And um, 
at every new duty station that, you know, we don't have a choice. We get orders. We got to go. You know, we have to move. And I find that if I don't um, find that Christian community, find that church to get, you know, plugged into that church. And then for me specifically, I truly feel the call of serving. It's who I am. It's who I believe the Lord molded me. You know, we talk about your um, your gifts that he, you know, bestows upon you. And I just truly feel that. And I have to, at each duty station, get into that church and, and get to serving. When I'm not, I feel almost a disconnection. Mm-hmm. Like it, And I will, spy, you know, start spiraling with, with old ways of thoughts. Of, the, the devil really tries to mm-hmm. get in there, you know. Um, but we were at our first duty station. It was San Diego, California, and I had met a woman. I I decided. I told my husband we got to go. To, we got to go to church. My husband was not a church goer mm-hmm. <laughs> back then, um, and he did not attend with me. Mm-hmm. And I just thought, you know, I have nothing else. Like I'm out here by myself. Um, I'm starting to not feel, you know, I'd left my nephews. We've talked about before I helped raise my nephews. I left them um, here in Pensacola um, and under care of my mom. And it was just very, all very, very hard. And I found a church and I got and I met someone on the very first day. And uh, she was actually in charge of the youth. But she, I remember she asked, Who, do you are you um, do you are you serving at all? Are you? I said, no, this is my first first time. She said, oh. Well, I'm, I'm Dion, and uh, yeah, you just hang out with me. Hmm. And it went like that. And she, we would do groups with me, and uh, maybe there would be one other woman there who was she was active duty Navy. Um, her name was Mara, and uh, she uh, would do studies with us. And she poured into us as women. That was the first time of like being taught as a woman, as a you know what I mean, an adult woman, like what it means of like to not only have God's love, your worth as a woman to God. Um, and then I was married. So like as a wife, right, like serving in your household, like meaning because, um, again, my husband was not, you know, he wasn't even I don't want to say he was not a believer, but he had his own struggles. That's mm-hmm. his own testimony. He had his own struggles. And um, so, you know, you know, how to, as a wife, still pour into him, you know? Um, and she, we would serve together. (laughs) We did youth. We also served the homeless community and it was just a constant. And it was through her again, someone pouring, taking that pouring into me and saying, you know, Hey, let me come kind of like what y'all say, you know, we're going to meet you where you're at, Mm -hmm. you know, and let's, I'm going to pour into you and you're worthy of it. You are worthy of this. You're worthy of my time. You're worthy of my love. Um, Same as you are um, worthy of God's love and God's Mm -hmm. time. Because I did have struggles of thinking, who am I for God to, even though I was saved, you know what I mean? And and baptized. And without that intimate relationship, it was who am I to all the things that I have done, all the, again, being, feeling too broken for what would he want with me? You know, Mm -hmm. there are so many better people out there. What would he want with me? And uh, again, having a woman that just, I surrounded myself with that and um, began that intimate relationship with him, having, you know, studies and and having devotionals and in the word and, um, you know, feeling that call to serve and doing, you know, actually pursuing it and pursuing Mm -hmm. him. That's the big thing, pursuing him and realizing he's been pursuing me this whole time. Mm -hmm. I, it took me to, you know, turn around and just see it and, and walk through that, you know, that door and pursue him. Um, so it's been a struggle. I, we, even as far as I've come, you know, because of the, the abuse that, um, I myself went through intimate touch is a very strong or a very, um, it's something very, that I struggle with very much. So, um, I don't, (laughs) <laughs> for a long time I don't like being hugged you know people say like I'm, mm-hmm. oh I'm a hugger and then they just hug you um and not not knocking anybody who does who does that I'm just saying there are people out here who are not hugger, mm-hmm. huggers um I used to really like s- kind of swap people's hands away and be like oh no thank you know what I mean like now through I've gone through you know a lot of therapy and now I can um 
I have found if I initiate it myself, right, I can do it. If I'm not the one who initiates, I count in my head, um, you know, and stay focused on that until they let go. You mm. know what I mean? Mm. Um, and for anybody who has, you know, hugged me, I don't want to take it the wrong way. It's just, um, it's just what I struggle with. And, you know, you think, well, as me and my husband, like, how do you do that in a marriage? We just talked about my husband's love language is physical touch. And mm-hmm. it has taken a lot of therapy. Um, and there are still times where, you know, I battle with why would he want to be with someone like me? Mm-hmm. You know, when I cringe sometimes thinking of him touching, you know, like even and we're just talking about coming up and giving me a hug. You know, who doesn't want after a long day want to, you know, mm-hmm. hug their spouse? And I'm over here like counting my head until he lets go. Um, the thoughts, the super negative thoughts I dealt with after having children of (laughs) what kind of mom am I that I don't want to embrace my children? Mm. And again, back to I'm just too broken. Mm -hmm. That evil has ruined me. Maybe I was created right in the beginning to be something good, but I'm just too tainted. I'm just too damaged. And, you know, we're, again— Lots of therapy, guys. Got me, you know, and uh, and and pursuing the Lord um, has helped me to overcome that, you know, and and um, realizing that, you know, as a mom, I love my kids so very much. It's just hard to believe that the Lord loves them more than we do, mm-hmm. but He does, you know, mm-hmm. and um, He has He has made me. To be the mom I'm supposed to be absolutely to them, no matter my shortcomings. Mm-hmm. Same with my husband. The Lord, I truly believe he made Drew for me. Like, that is my my soulmate. I, the things that we have overcome together and, and, and uh, you know, and he has been patient and, and just so understanding and um, – not saying we don't get on each other's nerves <laughs> sometimes, guys. Not saying that. But, um, you know, again, the Lord made, I truly believe the Lord made him for me. Mm-hmm. And he made me to be the wife I'm supposed to be for him. Absolutely. Absolutely. That was a, a lot. And I'm sorry I went like, oh, no, not, no, no, I no. kind of went don't all apologize. over the place. It, it's, first and foremost, I just want to say, and sorry, Megan, if I cut you off. Um, thank you so much for sharing your story. I got a little emotional when you were talking about being too broken because um, two verses came to mind and I wanted to read them that I was writing down over here. First is Hebrews 13, 5. I will never leave you or forsake you. Mm -hmm. This verse states that God will never or leave or forsake you no matter what, Mm -hmm. which is comforting as Christians because we don't deserve his love, but he chases after us. Mm -hmm. Um, And the second one was Timothy, uh, first Timothy 1, 12 through 17. I thank Christ Jesus, our Lord, who has given me the strength that he can be considered me trustworthy, appointing me to his service. Even though I was once a blasphemer blasphemer and a prosecutor and a violent man, I was shown mercy because I acted in ignorance and unbelief. Yes. And those verses came to me because I think we have a similar story of church. Mm -hmm. Um, I didn't go through the things that you went through. Um, I had my own struggles, but I, I didn't feel worthy either. And I think one of the hardest things for me and one of the things that like, I pray that we can do better as a church all together is loving people where they're at Mm -hmm. and not making them feel to your point. Like when I walked in those church doors, I was already my biggest Mm -hmm. critic. Right. And you feel so shameful and you feel so dirty and you Mm -hmm. feel so unclean and when you have people in the church that are supposed to be oozing out the love of the Lord right. and they know what God's word is and you don't and they point fingers and they judge. Yeah. Like we need to do better. Mm-hmm. We need to do better as Christians. Yeah. We need to do better as women. We need to do better as believers. Like right. as Christ- a community all, right? all, all across the board. You no, know, I agree with you. And um, I'm so thankful for that, that woman, that, did Mm -hmm. that Mm -hmm. that woman who had and knows the true christ love right it's not that legalistic Mm -hmm. churchology it's literally being a christian which is a christ follower Mm -hmm. right 
And that's important to decipher sometimes. Mm -hmm. And I, and I'm just, I'm just thankful that like you are willing to share and we relate in a lot of the ways that we got to Mm -hmm. the Lord. And I echo what you say. I think being a new Christian and like, I can tell you the time I accepted Jesus as my savior in junior high. Right. However, I did not have a relationship with him until after we lost our fathers because mm-hmm. I was never taught what a relationship with the Lord really looks like. Right. I was taught, like, y- if you're going to come to church, you better be wearing this. You better look right. like this. You better do this. You better you better bring your Bible. Right. And it's like, <laughs> I didn't ever have a Bible. Right. Like, I mean, mm-hmm. these are all the things that made me think, well, mark that off my list. Can't go to church because I don't got that. Right. Can't, I don't have a skirt. Mm-hmm. Mark that off the list, you know, like. And if we did better as a community, to your point, and as Christians, to embrace people where they're at, Mm -hmm. imagine. Because that's Mm -hmm. what Jesus did. Mm -hmm. Right. A hundred percent. He didn't. who he is. He didn't hang out with Christ followers. (laughs) He pursued the people Mm -hmm. that, you know, like he met the woman at the well as Mm -hmm. as a great example. Like, and I think a lot of times we forget that. Right. He didn't preach to people that believed. He went and found the people. Right. And the disciples followed him. And still didn't believe sometimes they still had doubt because they're yeah. humans right. to what your point is. And I think the other thing that I wanted to hit on real quick and then I'll pass it over to Megan because I know she's got some stuff. But we do all sin. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And I think that's another thing that we do poorly at right. is people believe that Christians are these holy people. I am not. Mm-mm. Do not put me in that category right. because I am not. I'm going to fail you every single time. The only reason why I'm here today is because of Christ's love, mm-hmm. period. Right. And I, every single day, have to pursue that relationship, that personal relationship. Mm-hmm. But we need to do better also in discipling people on how to get there. How to do it. I, I agree. There's a, a bit of a disconnect, I think, in yes. the um, you, whatever you want to call it, church community or community of believers. I think there's a true disconnect um, of there of how how do you per, pursue mm-hmm. we we do talk about it's important mm-hmm. and we talk about what it can look like sometimes but how do you do it like right. in real time real life like how do you do it you know i i, I agree with that i think that sometimes <clears throat> the church as a whole focuses so much on salvation which obviously we want to reach the lost right but we it's like okay they're saved we're done Move on to the next person right? Mm. rather than discipling that person and showing, okay, you've given your life to the Lord. This is what it looks like to live a life that mm-hmm. reflects Jesus. Right. Because like that person that you encountered, mm-hmm. that you want to train them up in a way that they're going to be able to be that person mm-hmm. for someone else and right. that they can use their testimony. And I want to encourage you because, um, you know, you're, you're talking about your brokenness and how can God use you. And let me just tell you, you've already been used in small group. Because Amen. there's a girl, Morgan, <laughs> who has <laughs> referenced something you have said several times and has used to be such an encouragement to her. And it was talk you were talking about, hopefully I get it right, but mm-hmm. how you can't um you can either have control or you can have faith, but you can't have both. Yes, I was referencing that. And a, she's a used it mm-hmm. she's already used it like I've heard her like, at least three times in conversation mm-hmm. saying like that has just mm-hmm. and just think like God has brought you from something so broken Mm, and he is healing you and in turn he's now using you to encourage other women who have broken past too right and that's such a testimony yes of the power of god and the power of his love and how he can make beauty from ashes and it's just i want to encourage you with that because um i think you know no matter what women have been through i we're very hard on ourselves we are Mm -hmm. um we tend to take everything a lot harder than other. Well, I guess it's just men. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> um, as far as emotionally, I'm not saying guys don't have emotions because mm-hmm. every person has emotions, and I'm not negating that at all. Um, but we're very hard on. Like, for example, like my husband, like something will happen, and he kind of just like, all right, let's move on. I'm like, mm-hmm. I'm I'm still thinking of something that happened four years ago at this time, <laughs> this date. Because it made such an impression on right. me, you know, mm-hmm. like the um, and um, we can be so hard on ourselves. But I think at the end of the day, it's we have to remember that 
it's not what we think about ourselves. It's not what other people think about ourselves. It's what the Lord thinks about us. And it's a hard truth to come to. Mm -hmm. But another voice that I was thinking about, um, you know, obviously uh, you were talking about how the devil just like things just kept happening and things were ripped from you. And it reminded me of John 10, 10. The thief comes only to steal and kill Mm -hmm. and destroy. But I came that they may have life and have it abundantly. And how like Satan, he knows Mm -hmm. how to discourage. He Mm -hmm. knows how to distract. Yes, distract Mm -hmm. intrusive thoughts, like toxic mentality. Mm -hmm. But God can give us life and give it abundantly. Mm -hmm. And he can take all of the things, you know, um, that we've struggled with and lay it at his feet. You know, and he can he can redeem us right. and and make us beautifully broken. <laughs> make us beautifully broken. So I was gonna <clears throat> tag on your words of encouragement. You had mm-hmm. said um, sometimes you feel like being a mom is hard mm-hmm. with your kids. I want you to know that your two kids I've had multiple times when I've helped on Wednesday nights are the most well behaved children in there and sweetest. Like Touch my heart. the sweetest, so <laughs> I if, try so hard as, a, and it shows. Like it's oozing out, and mm-hmm. it's oozing out of them the love that you're showing. Right. And even if you feel like you're not able to show them in a physical way, you're doing it and compensating in other ways that is mm-hmm. affecting them to where they don't need that. That's not lacking in them because they're, it's right. it's overflowing love. And like I need you to know that you're doing a great job, and that we, I think. As moms, we put really mm-hmm. big pressure mm-hmm. on ourselves. But with someone who has walked through what you've walked, I can't even imagine. But I want you to know, like, I have inter- had multiple interactions with your children, and they are embodiment of what Christ's love is. Thank you. That makes – because especially as a mom, that's um, – and because it's so recent. I mean, my oldest is six. My youngest is three. And that's probably one of the biggest struggles, you know, in the last um, six years is – am I doing enough? Again, we just talked about being too broken. And um, I don't, I look back and I, I didn't know what it was like to be loved. You know, how am I supposed to show a, ch- mm-hmm. a child that? And um, I just try every day, just try and, you know, I, I pray over them, pray for them. And it really comes down to, I can't do it alone. That's right. I know that. Lord, please let them fill you through me, use me, you know, constantly those thoughts. And um, so thank you for saying that. Like I, <clears throat> if at the end of the day, if I can just raise children that have the love of God and can pour that, they pour it out mm-hmm. to others. That's all I'm trying to accomplish as a mom, like truly. Well, you're doing it and you're thank doing you. it well. Thank you. You are. And doing it also walking through, and I just want to circle back to this real quick, because not only are you walking through your past, but you're also walking through a lifestyle that is very isolating, Mm -hmm. very hard as a military wife. And um, first and foremost, I want to thank your husband for his service, because without men and women who actively choose to run to the danger, we wouldn't be able to be sitting here having this discussion. So Mm -hmm. thank you, Drew, for your service. And thank you for your service holding down the home front for what you do on a daily basis, because it's not easy being a single mom Mm -hmm. when they're away. Right. It's not easy when the world is upside down and you have no idea what's going to happen, but all you can do is trust God. Mm -hmm. And um, I commend you for that because the, the past that you walked through was enough for a lifetime. Being a military wife is enough for a lifetime too. Mm -hmm. And you, you're right. We can't do it alone. Mm-mm. We can only do it with the Lord. So only with the Lord. And I, I think you made a good point of that life of isolation. It does it, and that's why, again, I just anyone listening, military wife or not, or not, when you find yourself in isolation, it's a breeding ground for mm-hmm. the devil to to mm-hmm. just all the negativity to attack and attack and attack. And um, we talk a, a lot about we have on Wednesday night, small group, beautifully broken. <clears throat> just slide that in there. <laughs> you don't have one. <clears throat> um, you know, that the community, if, 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 you know, it doesn't have to be beautifully broken, but find that community, a safe space. And um, I got to give a shout out to, to Brie on this because she, <laughs> she, uh, and it's because it's because of all the trauma. It's because of all the things, and I can recognize that. And I and I've worked on it. But here's the reality, guys. We, no matter. Okay, 
<clears throat> I have overcome, that doesn't mean I still don't struggle, right? right? Yeah. And um, a very unhealthy coping mechanism that I have <laughs> is when, and I can, I understand, I admit it is unhealthy. I, I work on it. <laughs> um, when I get stressed, I do not look at notifications. Those things get, whoops, swiped away. So mm-hmm. I don't know. Someone's text me. Someone's call me. Like, I don't, you know, I already don't really do social media. Mm-hmm. Um, like, I just, and I, I, I become a, a recluse. Like, mm-hmm. I just, mm-hmm. um, I won't go to small group. I won't, you know what I mean? Like, I just, um, that's when I'm very stressed or, or cause it's just like, it's all too mm-hmm. much. What, what's an extra thing? You know, it's extra energy to go here. It's extra energy to talk to anyone else. And Brie, anytime I, I am not at church, <laughs> anytime I am not at small group, she messages me mm-hmm. and is like, miss, miss you. And it's not in a, I know now I have been a part of, um, not this church, uh, I've not experienced this, uh, but in other churches I have experienced where it's more of like a, why weren't you here? You know yeah. what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like a guilty thing. That's not where this is coming from. Mm-hmm. This is a, of love of like, hey, I see you, mm-hmm. you know, like. I'm here. Here's a lifeline. Right. Here's a lifeline. Like, you know, and I never respond. (laughs) (laughs) But, Brie, I see them and... It means a lot. next time I'm there, Mm -hmm. I can I can echo what you say because when we first started, I... Same thing. It was the accountability I needed Mm -hmm. um, to... Because Zach and I had stopped being faithful to church. And I never had, like, oh, people actually want me at church. <laughs> like, <laughs> and not, like you said, not a guilt tripping. Like, no. um, it's always, like, wow, like, they actually noticed I wasn't there, which mm-hmm. has, like, not been a thing. Right. And it's, and I had, and I, at first I was like, mm, this is weird. But then I was like, God, thank you for the people who care enough to hold yes. me accountable. Yes. Mm-hmm. Um, because I, I needed that. Mm-hmm. I still need it. <laughs> right. I still need it. I <laughs> and still. So it's, it's funny you say that because I completely understand that (laughs) yes Yes, for sure for sure but i also think it's a it's a it's almost like i call them like god kisses Mm -hmm. like it's a little like hey jen Mm -hmm. like i know you're isolating let me send you a friend like kind of a thing like i feel like he orchestrates so much and like i know her heart and i feel like i can speak a little bit to it but like she's just the type of person that like someone be on her mind and mm-hmm. th- that's the way the Lord speaks to her. And we've had conversations about this mm-hmm. before. Like the Lord speaks to her by like putting somebody specifically mm-hmm. on her heart that she reaches out to. And like, that's, that's so cool. I call them like little God kisses. Mm-hmm. Like, Hey, you're having a rough day. Here's a friend to say hi. That is so beautiful. I, I think it's so also beautiful. an encouragement too. Like if, if the Lord puts someone on your mind, don't, don't just ignore it. Don't you ignore know? it. There's right. a reason why he's put that person yes. in your mind. Just text him. Don't right. wait. You know? Don't wait. Cause yeah. you never know that person exactly. could be waiting for that lifeline. Right. And literally on the brink of jumping over the ledge. Right. And that little bit of encouragement mm-hmm. is what saves them. Right. Yeah. For sure. It's good. So um, one thing we like to ask, um, it, it, is there any scripture or Bible verses that the Lord has really just impressed on your heart um, as you've maneuvered through these struggles um, that's just kind of just been like, I like to call God hugs, you know, God versus hugs. like God hugs. Cause I'm like, Oh, thank you. Because give you all know, the God yeah, hugs and God, God kisses. kisses. Up in here. <laughs> all um, of but like how he uses that to encourage you, yes. you know, mm-hmm. and remind yeah. you of his goodness. Um, there are <clears throat> quite a few that I marked down. I took notes. Everybody's <laughs> like, oh, you see me looking down. It's cause I needed, uh, again, vulnerable is, um, not fun for anybody. So it's I hard. Didn't, I didn't make notes. Um, you said beauty from ashes, and it's one of my one of my favorites because um, I just think you know <laughs> my spirit animal. Sometimes I'm a phoenix, and I'm just coming. You know, the <laughs> Lord just takes me from the ashes. You know, um, but Isaiah sixty one three bestow bestow on them a crown of beauty instead of ashes, the oil of joy instead of mourning. You know, like He creates beauty mm-hmm. in mm-hmm. the most from the most disastrous, from the most ugly, from the most, from death, mm-hmm. he creates beauty. Um, Philippians 4.13, I know uh, <laughs> that's uh, everyone, well, not a lot of believers, <laughs> no, <laughs> no, Philippians 4.13, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Um, 
It's so true. It's so true. Mm-hmm. It is so true. Um, Psalms one thirty nine fourteen. I will praise you because I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Mm, that, that's a good one. It took a long time for me to understand what that meant. I am wonderfully made by him. I was created mm-hmm. by him. His light is within me. Evil tried to take the light away, and it can't. Evil mm-hmm. cannot prevail because the Lord is within me, and he is the light. You know? And he makes no mistakes. He makes no mistakes. Mm-hmm. I am who I I truly, when I talked about unicorns and sunshine, it's like, you know, we, the, I had a devotional a couple of days ago. I actually had a message, Brie, and I was like, girl. The study that, you know, because we do a study in Bruno Fully Broken about, um, like, our, our thoughts. And we talk about the armor of God and, and mm-hmm. just, like, what the scripture says to to combat, you know, that stuff. And, and it was on uh, glory in the struggle. Mm. And I was like, this is a hard one, glory in the struggle. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if I want to read this one. <laughs> Ooh. Ooh, I don't know about that. Um, but it it basically that we go through the struggles that we do um, because out of that, the Lord molds us of who, you know, who he created us mm. to be. Like he doesn't make mistakes as and it makes me think of like the footprints in the sand story, mm-hmm. like through all of it. You feel, you know, sometimes can feel alone. But if you just look, he was holding us the whole time. That's right. You know, sometimes you feel like he's left. No, he's picking us up. You know, he's carrying us through it. Um, but Proverbs 31, 25, uh, she's clothed with strength and dignity, mm-hmm. and she laughs without fear of the future. Mm-hmm. That's one that I just, um, it took a long time to believe in. Mm-hmm. Um, I do believe it now, though, but it took a long time to get there. But I am. Again, he made me in such a beautiful way, and he clothed me. In dignity. <laughs> I am his princess. <laughs> you are. I am his princess. <laughs> Romans twelve twenty one. Do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. This mm. one is so important to me because earlier I was talking about rainbows and sunshine and like again I could I could have let that be my story of, of the evil you know what I mean? Like it, it could have I, I could have continued, you know what I mean? Like just down certain paths and be consumed by it. And, and when the thoughts happen, be consumed by it. Um, but I truly believe the Lord, like when he was creating me and he was creating my little, little heart, he just did like a little dink of sunshine. You know what I mean? Like you're going to be, you know, this is what I've, this is my gift. I've, been, you know, you mm-hmm. are going to be to other people and, you know, and, um, that call to serve, like I just want to change people's lives for the better and and create good out of it. And I'm and I'm always drawn to the the hard cases, right? The the people who don't want the love, don't feel that they should be mm. loved. Those are the ones I'm drawn to because I've been there, <laughs> and you know. And um, so that one, it just speaks so much to me because I want to overcome evil with good all day, every day. That's what I want to do. Um, last one, Psalms 103.12, as far from the east as from mm. the west, mm. so far has he removed our transgressions from us. I struggle with this all the time, but I know it to be true. Thoughts of the things the things that I've shared on this podcast, right? That's only, that's surface level. Um, And I am not my sin, my sin. Like Mm -hmm. I, I've been forgiven. Like he, my, um, his promise of salvation will always include me. Like it includes me forevermore. Like, you know, and, and from the East is from the West, right? Uh, So far as removed from my transit. Like I am not, that is not me. Mm. He has wiped them clean. Mm. Um, and it's such an important one, anyone struggling with their their past, to to know really to let that sit with you. You know, have qu- have some quiet time with, <laughs> with that one. Yeah, mm-hmm. that's a good one. That's really mm-hmm. good. You're going to do the... Are we done? I, I think mean, so. are we at that point? I think so. Okay. Unless you had any other... Oh, no, no. I, I, we're good. Okay. <laughs> I just wasn't sure what the look was for. <laughs> Okay, before before we do our moment at the well, which is what we typically end on, a little segment mm. there, I kind of just want to echo what Brittany was saying, was just thank you for being vulnerable mm. and sharing your story because um, I think it's amazing um, when what God can do with our with being vulnerable and sharing our hearts um, because you never know 
who out there is struggling, who needs to know they're not alone, that they may be in the midst of that isolation and where they have lost all hope and they are sitting in those thoughts where they are, they, there is, they can't be redeemed, that they are too far gone. Mm. Um, and, um, when we lay aside those thoughts that, Oh, if, if I share this, then people are gonna think differently of me. And then instead saying, if I share this, I may be the, the last glimmer of hope that somebody comes across right. not not us like ourselves but the like we're mm-hmm. we're we're taking what God has brought us through and we're showing Jesus to them and because and then and, and they're and God's going to take my brokenness and help somebody in their healing um and you never know what how God is going to use us and he can use things in mighty ways that we never see and sometimes we might not know like mm-hmm. you know mm-hmm. if we've ever affected somebody in some way um but I appreciate you being willing to share because I know it's not easy. Um, it's actually probably some of the hardest things to share your dark moments. Um, and so I just appreciate you. Mm. Um, and I appreciate you just being willing to to talk to people. Like, I, um, maybe I should, I don't, I'll just say it. Me and her, like, a few weeks ago, Totally didn't even go into service. <laughs> Sorry, Pastor Godfrey. <laughs> but I, you passed me the, at the right. The intentions were there. Yes, okay, we were literally about to walk in. Way. I was at the door, and I just some called to say, "Stop!" I never stop. I just say, "I hey, know." And, pass. and something was just like, ah, "Just ask Megan how her trip was," you know. Mm. And let me tell you, the conversation we had that day. First, I felt like I got to know you really well, but it, I left encouraged in a different way Mm. and it was amazing to see like because I was that day I was struggling and because I shared with you just some stuff about like my past and childhood and it's stuff I'm working through Mm -hmm. and it was just like it was a God moment and again I promise it was all about Jesus (laughs) (laughs) we weren't yeah we we weren't just you know gossiping it was it was like I've already just in my little bit that I've gotten to know Mm -hmm. you like God's already used you to mm-hmm. be an encouragement to me. So mm-hmm. I can even imagine how he's going to use this to encourage women who have been through similar stories as you. And that is just a beautiful, beautiful portrait of his redemption. Mm. Um, and also just a beautiful representation of how he's the potter and we're the clay mm-hmm. and how like we can be this ugly lump of clay mm-hmm. and he can mold us into this beautiful piece of pottery. I love that. And um, even in our brokenness. Right. And, it's good. So I just want to thank you for that. Um, but wait, 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 I got one oh, more thing okay. to add. <clears throat> so you're going to end it. No, 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 <laughs> you are. I just wanted to say, you know, one of the things that you said that stuck out too to me was, you know, that you wanted to be sunshine and rainbows and like you do ooze that. And how beautiful is that? That the Lord is completely transformed your mm-hmm. life mm-hmm. to where you can ooze those rainbows out versus what you what what you used to which mm-hmm. was reaction and frustration and emotions and feelings like nobody is too far gone mm-hmm. right and um those rainbows are evident in you and your smile and who you are as a person and i just want to say to our listeners out there if you're at a place where you feel like there is no hope mm-hmm. there's hope in jesus mm-hmm. yeah. and if you need somebody to um just listen to you megan and i are always in ear and i know mm-hmm that Jen would be happy to speak to you too. Mm -hmm. So reach out to us if you need that. Um, But I just wanted to say like, it's such a 360. Like it's just so beautiful how God has taken what you have walked through the darkness Mm -hmm. and turned it into light. Turn it into light. Yes. Um, It's such a, through the the journey of it all, um, being on the side of it, it, it's truly, and, and, this isn't all I've gotten from it, but even if this was all I got out of it, um, to me, it's one of the most important things. I have truly learned what love is mm. and how to love unconditionally and without judgment. Mm. Mm. That's and, I'm, good. And, and again, when I talked about teaching my kid, I mean, that's one of my biggest things, um, to love unconditionally and without judgment. And anybody out there, yes, you need to listen. And I will love unconditionally and without judgment. Well, you never know what somebody is walking through behind mm-hmm. closed doors. Yes, 100%. You never know what mm-hmm. that person is 
going home to. Yep. Mm -hmm. They could have the perfect life on social media, the perfect life when you see them together or at mm -hmm. church or on the street. You have no idea no what idea. is going behind, on behind closed doors. And I think if we remembered that more as as Christians and as the right. church, um, we could love better. Mm -hmm. Something you said before. I do moment of all. I'm sorry. But I We're said just going to so keep going. <laughs> yeah. sorry. sorry, cameraman. We're just going to keep going. I, I've said it so many times, and God uses music, <clears throat> and I, he, will, he will bring a song to mind like that. You say in something. And you so, talking about being a light. I don't know. It's a very popular song, but it's Marvelous Light. And it's into marvelous light I'm running, out of darkness, out of shame. Mm. By the cross you are the truth, you are the life, you are the way. My dead heart now is beating, my deepest stains now clean. Your breath fills up my lungs, now I'm free, now I'm yes. free. And it talks about lifting your hands and spinning around because you found the light. Mm. And like God has put that light back in you and now you are sharing that marvelous light with other people. Right. Anyway, sorry, music is like my therapy. <laughs> So. I love that you brought that up because I were just in case you talked about music. I went, oh, <laughs> just in case. she was prepared. I was prepared, guys. I was prepared. <laughs> just real quick, and then we can. <laughs> um, Two hours later. <laughs> hours later. Um, um, what about those snacks? <laughs> <laughs> hey, cameraman, that's pretty cute over there. He's a hottie. Um, where's our snacks? <laughs> it's snacks at, man. Um, so. It, we have just preparing for those for those who don't know. I've been preparing for a little while for to do this podcast, <laughs> and um, I almost <laughs> backed out and and uh, overthought like the you know what I mean overthought it and thought like oh it's a sign that I just don't need I'm not ready you know and there's those thoughts of um, you know because I mean not only to share like you know. <laughs> This church is a big church. <laughs> now my kids go to school at this church. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. and, and I'm and I'm trying to get very involved with the church. And and you have these thoughts of what are people going to mm -hmm. think? You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Because, again, I'm not saying it's going to happen in this church, but the reality is you get judged. You know, mm -hmm. I mean, that's just reality. And so there is a lot of thoughts. But anyways, uh, so I was. <laughs> they judging you. They have to come through me. Just saying. <laughs> mm-hmm. Hmm. There's my ghetto. Get my light weight. <laughs> now, y'all think my ghetto is going to pop back out, and I have to tell somebody. No, I'm just I have to pray for it. Pray. I have to pray. <laughs> um, anyway, so uh, I've been in my field, you know, I mean, really in my fields, and, and um, having more flashbacks than usual and just being more emotional. Not that I don't get emotional, because it is, it's, it's emotional to to relive some of this stuff and, um, but preparing and, and writing, you know, I, I sent y'all pre, you know, beforehand, like the stuff and, and just the emotions having to even put that on paper was a lot. But anyways, coming, it's so, it's almost like old wounds being opened back up mm -hmm. and not that he doesn't have, um, forget the glue to put him back together. I mean, he's, he is, you know, swiping those away, mm -hmm. but here at, um, in worship for a, f a few times over, I don't know, the couple last couple months, I've the uh, worship team has sung this song, and I'm in the back like trying not to cry. This last Sunday, I was weeping like a <laughs> leaky <laughs> faucet. Yes, and I I wanted to acknowledge it if if I had the chance. So this mm -hmm. is it. Um, it's in, is it names by Evolution wor uh, Worship? Oh my goodness, you are the medicine, the only cure for everything. I feel within, redeeming what was lost and all that could have been. Oh, this is a healing kind of love. You are the truest friend, staying through the night when I was at my end, comforting my heart till it was light again. Oh, this is a faithful kind of love. Mm -hmm. It is so true. I mean, he is, he's it, man. Mm -hmm. So I encourage anybody who, anyone who doesn't know that yet, <laughs> know that yet, or has questions about that yet, um, it, it's it. He is the medicine. That's right. That's really good. Okay. So I promise you can have it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So this is called the moment at the well. And I know mm -hmm. we've talked about a lot of big things yeah. that have happened in your life. Um, and it, this may even be something that has touched on that already. But mm -hmm. can you share with us just a pivotal impactful moment that where God met you mm -hmm. um that just drew you closer to him um I know y'all asked this question so I had to think through all, <laughs> the, <clears throat> through all the things um there have been many many times but I I want to acknowledge I think like the first I'll call it um like 
contact moment with, or like the first real feeling of like his pre, like his pre, I mean, an all encompassing of his presence. Um, I was um, in San Diego. We had gone to um, a woman's conference. Dion had invited me to, and um, the worship mm. uh, team was up there, and it was um, good. Good Father was it was newer, and and they. Um, they were singing that song and um, my dad um, even though with all the things um, as a child you don't you don't see your parents in that way like like they're still your parents Mm -hmm. you know Mm -hmm. what I mean my dad was still my dad and I just wanted to be loved Mm -hmm. you know I just wanted to be loved Um, and uh, unfortunately he died when I was 12 of sources of the liver Mm -hmm. He had, um, you know, unfortunately. And um, so growing up, you know, um, that other part of my childhood without a dad, you know, and constantly thinking. And, you know, I've talked about it before. Like, as a, you know, as a girl, that's, <laughs> that's all you want mm-hmm. as a dad. You just want to be protected. You mm-hmm. want to be cared for. Um, getting married without my dad. Walking down the aisle again, he had his faults. Um, and he was not a nice man in a lot of ways. But again, as a child, you don't, mm-hmm. you know what I mean? You still want that. Um, so I struggled with, with that um, as well. And I remember being <laughs> in that, uh, uh, I guess it was a their, I don't know, it wasn't their gym. Auditorium. It was their auditorium. Um, and they were singing that song, and I got chills all over. And I just like silently <laughs> just tears fall, mm-hmm. falling down, and I couldn't comprehend like what, you know, I'm just hearing the, the words right and then what they're they're saying and um it was like feeling I got chills and just this all-encompassing warmth mm-hmm. and like I've had few times up until <coughs> then of really feeling love and and comfort and protection and it was like all those feelings at once and it was I I took a moment and was just you really are the good Mm -hmm. you know what I mean you really are like you're um so yeah and it was just it was a beautiful moment Mm -hmm. of um it it, it's unfortunate it it is unfortunate I'll speak the truth of it it is unfortunate my my past um of course I would have loved to have grown up a more normal life of course I would have loved to have had a dad I wish I still had a dad you know and and to have these times um however he is such a good good father Mm -hmm. Yes, he really is. That's one of my favorite songs as well. It yes. is one of the biggest God hug songs that, yes. I, that yes. exists for me. Yes. So I think yes. every person in this room, including the cameraman, can attest mm-hmm. that song is mm-hmm. very touching very for touching. somebody who has lost their father, their biological mm-hmm. earthly father. But knowing that you have a heavenly father that's mm-hmm. never left you, never left me, and will never leave you, right? Never forsake me, will never leave me. Mm good no matter what i do absolutely mm-hmm. gosh i know oh, it's good this good has been good this, this has, has been, been good all right well i'm gonna close this out meg you have anything else you want to add thank, i'm just this thank was you great. jesus yeah. yeah yeah all glory goes to him oh uh, i just want to thank y'all real quick for letting me come home and have the opportunity to be vulnerable in such a way and um what y'all are trying to do it's a beautiful thing um, the first time I, I listened to the intro and it was, you know, it because and it's not just here, like in everything that y'all do, it is very much so <clears throat> meet you where you are, you know, <laughs> and um, hearing the intro, if you're eating Oreos on your closet floor, <laughs> <laughs> you know, and funny thing, like I've taken meetings like and had to go like hide in the mm-hmm. closet, and closet, you know, and taking a, a call and my boss be laughing at me and I'm just like. This is the life I live, man. I don't know <laughs> There's no I quiet. Yeah, there's no quiet. There's no privacy. Um, so anyways, I just, I don't want to get too off track, but I'm just, I, it's, it's a beautiful thing of what y'all are trying to do. And, and it's so needed, not just in the community, right, of, of the church and believers, but for women. Mm-hmm. It's, it's very much needed. We are very hard on, hard on ourselves and there's these expectations from so many places. Mm-hmm. Um, and so thank you. Thank you for what y'all are trying to do and just the message that is so important that you're trying to get out. Hmm. Well, you're sweet. Mm-hmm. Um, I just, 
I go back to like the moment where like the Lord put this podcast on my heart and like who he told me to ask probably freaked Megan out because I am so unorganized. She's probably like, I'm about to adventure upon this adventure with somebody that (laughs) is literally like all over the place. So thanks Meg for being patient with me because I have hot mess express. That's what you're going to get from me. Yeah, girl. I'm saying choo choo. Let's go. (laughs) Let's go. Um, I'll be the driver. (laughs) (laughs) Of course you will. (laughs) I'm just waving at everybody. (laughs) I tested to like the Goofy ride at Disney World, like where Goofy's driving and like he's not paying attention to anything and he gets in the car crash. Like that's my life. (laughs) (laughs) I'm on a different train then. Sorry. The starting of Brittany's life. Detached. (laughs) Parts are going the other way. But that's me like i can't i can't i you don't get anything else from me that's me that's who i am that's who the lord made me hey, hey you know and what? don't change that exactly. because <laughs> it is a joy to <laughs> is it, is it? i feel like you're Listen, lying to yourself jesus, joy was out of, like it jesus was is together. teaching me joy comes to the form. <laughs> joy in the struggle yeah. i think is what we we talked but about no seriously point. like and it's it's funny and I, I know we're ending and we'll but we'll end finally sometime. yeah i know <laughs> um well part three <laughs> I, know, um, part, I know it's gonna have to go in parts yeah. this has been long hasn't it but you know I, life has changed me a lot and it's hardened me in areas where mm. i used to be spontaneous and still a rule follower but like <laughs> <laughs> and i had a plan but i was like like if we're if we're gonna do this like we need to make sure we do xyz but you know i i appreciate people who like i sometimes like i need to be reminded it's let's have, go have fun let's go like i love to have fun <clears throat> but can it be on the calendar <laughs> can, it be on the calendar? can i share since you just yeah. said being hard and real quick uh a new prayer came from that devotional that i said was so hard and i wanted to be like uh Easier said than done. Pass. <laughs> like, but the swipe up notification. <laughs> Remember, I said I ignore notification. We ignore ignoring that one. Um, the prayer that was with that devotion was guard my heart against being hardened or indifferent. Mm. Produce good things in my heart, Lord, even if the circumstances are hard. But it just made me think because you were saying, you know, life does harden us, man. And um, I've been praying that ever since the devotional daily. I'm going to continue doing it because. Oh boy, right? We gotta, we gotta soften up some. Mm-hmm. Mm. Soften well, I up. think he gave me you, obviously, to keep me straight. And I and I like to follow rules sometimes. Sometimes, sometimes. I don't. Um, but the Lord does tell us in the Bible to follow rules because He puts <laughs> people in power, and we're supposed to abide by His rules. And mm-hmm. I get that, and I'm working on that. But He gave me you to keep me straight. Well, mm. to help me, and I need to loosen the reins a little bit sometimes. My help me. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> what, a great, what a great combination, my though. My helpmate in this process, yes, yes, though. Yes, 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 I know. My, I, he's my helpmate, obviously, in life. And we all know he's hot, so there's that. But uh, <laughs> he, he don't can't see, but his back of his neck just turned red. <laughs> he's blushing. Um, You're embarrassing him. I know. I do that. I think it's just a beautiful representation of how God orchestrates things for absolutely you know, th- how things have to happen mm-hmm. to bring people that he needs together um, because, you know, like, anyways, it's, I, I love, I know now we're going on a tangent. Mm-hmm. Um, I love you. I love you. I love everybody. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> she loves you, cameraman. <laughs> Best pastor ever. <laughs> yeah. Shout out. Yeah, Hashtag shout come out. to Beulah Campus. Yeah. Exactly. Shout out to uh, our cameraman who we reference um, all podcasts. Thank you for what you do. And um, he doesn't get paid to do this. He does this out of the kindness of the heart because he believes in what, God is doing through this podcast and to have a husband that obviously, you know, he is a pastor, but to believe in something so strongly, he edits the podcast. He helps upload the podcast. He makes clips for the podcast. He switches the camera. Every time one of us talks, he's like, he does it all. So thank you, babe, for believing in us and just allowing the God to work in, in my ministry, because a lot of times I'm supporting him in his ministry. So it's, Mm -hmm. it's super being such a planner. Yeah, he is a planner. He is a planner. Thank you so much. Yes. Yeah, he's he's the planner. Um, he keeps me straight. She's he, like, this is how I survive. This. He pays all the bills. I mean, uh, I would. They'd be calling me every day because I wouldn't be paying things. Anyways, we gotta wrap this up. So, um, thank you, um, again, and um, thank you all so much for tuning in in this hour and thirty three minute podcast. Gosh, I'm so sorry. We oh, okay. appreciate you, and um, when the Lord moves, the Lord moves. Mm-hmm. You can't you can't stop. Amen. You can't stop him from moving. So. Mm-hmm. 
Um, if you are struggling with anything that's been talked about on this podcast or anything in general that you need us to help you with, we have resources for help. Um, if you need us to be praying for you about something, we would love to, to hear from you. Um, Megan and I take seriously when you DM us and ask us for prayers, we will be praying over you. If you need to get in touch with Jen, we can help you, um, talk to her. Um, if you need anything at all, reach out to us. We'd love to hear from you. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, uh, we'll see you next episode. Hope you have a great day. It's a brand new day. Hey. Wake up every morning and say it's a brand new day. Hey. Take a good day, make it great, okay? Cause if you got some lemons, make some lemonade. Yeah, taste those clouds away. It's a brand new day. Hey, it's a brand new day. It's a brand new day. Okay, okay. My whole life got them hand me downs. But what that meant was I had my family round. And sometimes I can't help but frown Then I remember what I meant for It's so simple I just say Ooh. Gotta just celebrate Ooh. It's gonna be a-okay Life's too short to waste away One step at a time's all it takes, okay It's a brand new day I'm allergic to a bad mood, ayy Okay, let me ask you If you got a smile on your face, raise your hands up, ayy That's the mantra So get up off your feet, go ahead, stand up ay. Okay, what's the plan, huh? Woke up every day like this It's a brand new day, ayy